video, I'll demonstrate how to conduct multiple comparisons or pairwise comparisons for repeated measures ANOVA. Uh, and uh, the data set uh, used uh, in this illustration is the one from the lecture. So a researcher used seven participants in a study to investigate the effect of different levels of stress on levels of creativity. Each participant provided a score in each of three conditions, no stress, mild stress, and moderate stress. The dependent variable was overall judgment of creative problem solving. So basically we have a one factor design uh, and the factor is uh, um, within the participants factor and uh, each person provided three sets of scores. The dependent variable is creative problem solving score. So let's have a look at the data set. So we enter our data set that reflects the within participants design. Let's make it a bit prettier. There we go. So again, to conduct the analysis, you need to complete four steps. The first one, testing of the assumptions. The second one is uh, uh, to do descriptive statistics, third one, inferential statistics, and four one, fourth one is um, uh, test uh, um, to conduct multiple comparisons. <coughs> Sorry, uh, to conduct multiple comparisons uh, if the main effect in ANOVA was significant. So let's start uh, with testing of the assumptions. So analyze descriptive statistics, explore, and the assumption we're testing is normal uh, or relatively normal distribution of the dependent variable. So we put all our um, dependent we put our dependent variable coded under each level of the within participants factor uh, into the dependent list. Um, we go to statistics to select screening for the outliers. We go to plots to select our histogram and normality plots with test. Continue and we press OK. So here is the output for within participants, uh, um, or here is an output for our dependent variable. And uh, the first table say that there were six cases and there are no missing data. The descriptive statistics were interested in values of skewness and kurtosis at this stage. So we examined them, skewness, kurtosis, well, this one is a bit on the fishy side. And this one is a bit on the fishy side, but seems to be kind of not that bad. Uh, we look at our tests of normality, Kolmogorov, Smirnov, and Shapiro Wilk, and the results are non significant. Um, this means that distribution of our variable is not different from normal distribution. Uh, we we'll look at the histogram. Okay, this one looks a bit skewed, not a bit, quite skewed. Um, and uh, there are no outliers or in a no stress condition. Mild stress looks more or less normal, um, and uh, there are there is one outlier, uh, but again, this outlier is uh, considered at 1.5 uh, with 1.5 rule. Um, and uh, therefore potentially can be kept in a data. If it was a star, then we would have to remove that person. Um, a moderate stress, um, yeah, a bit skewed to the other side. Um, and no outliers in there. So overall, what we can do is uh, um, the Histograms showed slight uh, deviations uh, or skewness within the distributions, but Shapiro-Wilk test and Kolmogorov-Smirnov test say that uh, the distribution is not different from the normal distribution, um, and that is with the presence of that one outlier. So um, you potentially can just rely on the Kolmogorov-Smirnov and Shapiro-Wilk test and um, uh, keep the outlier in. 
Uh, in this case, you can say that, okay, it's not perfect, but it's uh, within the expected range and ANOVA can handle small deviations, um, so it shouldn't be a concern for their analysis. So um, now uh, the descriptive statistics, the inferential statistics and multiple comparisons can be done via ANOVA menu. So this is a repeated measure design, so we go to analyze general linear model repeated measures. Now we specify our factor, and our factor is stress, and stress has three levels. We add it, and we define it. Gosh, it takes long. There we go. So we we'll put no stress, mild stress, and moderate stress for each level of a within subjects uh, factor. Uh, then what we need to do is um, we can go to plots and we can also um, illustrate it in a line chart or bar chart. Um, Bar charts seem to gain more popularity in the past 10 years than the line graphs. Uh, we, because it's a within participants design, we don't have uh, a post hoc options for within participants design. And SPSS actively prevents you from going to post hoc. So if you'll go to the post hoc, it'll show you nothing. You can't choose this menu which is a very good one because sometimes people forget that there is no post hoc test for within participants factors. Uh, what you can do is to go to EM means, so which is uh, estimated marginal means, and you can move your stress to display means for, and in here compare main effects. So when you tick this box, you then can choose the confidence interval adjustments you need to make. So the most common one is Benferroni adjustments, and that is the one that is quite crude, uh, but uh, it performs job quite well. So you choose your Benferroni adjustment, uh, you press continue, and the other things we need is options. As always, we want our descriptive statistics one factor, let's do estimates of the effect size, um, and that's it. So we go to continue and OK. So here is the output, so within subject factor with three levels, uh, we get our descriptive statistics on the scores, so we see that participants in no stress be, uh, performed much better in creative problem solving task than they did in the uh, mild stress and the worst performance was in a moderate stress condition. Um, then next table we're interested is Merschley's test of sphericity. Remember sphericity needs to be assumed uh, for ANOVA or you'll need to use the epsilon adjustments. In this case the Merschley's test of sphericity is not significant which means the next table which is test of within subject effects, we will read from the line that says sphericity assumed. So for the stress in the sphericity assumed, uh, we get our F ratio, we get our degrees of freedom, we get degrees of freedom for error, and uh, um, the stress has a significant main effect on uh, creative problem solving performance. And it explains 74% of variance in creative problem solving. So uh, overall, the result is significant, but we don't know between which conditions the uh, difference lies. So uh, what we then can look at is this estimated marginal means that we asked for. So we have our means. And in here, this table, pairwise comparison, looks uh, very similar to what you'll obtain with the Tukey test. And what we have, again, because we have three groups, we're comparing um, group one with group two, group one uh, with group uh, three, group one uh, with the, oh, sorry, 
group uh, two with group three. So overall, we have just three comparisons. So um, what we see is group one with group two is not significantly different. So whether you're in a no, no stress or mild stress, there is no significant effect on your um, creative problem solving performance. However, uh, there is a significant difference between group one and group three. Um, here is the value. Uh, this means that uh, uh, there is a significant difference between no stress and having a um, uh, moderate stress. So the, the performance significantly decreases in the moderate stre stress condition. In terms of group two and three, so whether you're experiencing mild stress or moderate stress, there is overall no significant difference. And uh, basically this is how you locate where the difference lies when you have a significant main effect for the factor that has more, three or more levels. Um, and uh, this is it for within participants design. You also have your plot uh, if you uh, want to use it. Again, for this simple design, the plot adds very little additional information and mainly for you to see uh, how the conditions uh, look like and a good way for um, people who like visuals to understand their data.